OGB students. students. Welcome. We're here, Hannah. We're, this is so exciting. Let's go. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Colton. My name is Hannah. The one, the only Hannah Farm. We are pumped that you are here right now. Now, probably you, a lot of y'all are sitting in the living room right now yes. with some leaders. Real people. quick, if you're excited about the people in your oh. room, give them some jazz give hands. Give them some jazz hands. Some more love. Shout out the host. Your host family. Host, a little jazz that way, a little jazz that way, a little, little jazz around there. That's right, Hannah. We're um, excited. Thank you. We're here. Now, here's what we need you to do right now, though, all right? We need y'all to pull out your cellular device. Yes, pull all it right? out. Cellular device, pull it out, and if you have Instagram, you need to follow our yes. high school channel. Hannah, what is the name of that? BaysideGB.HS. Go follow it. There's some awesome stuff happening there. Oh, 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 and you guys, there's this amazing video on there because Colson really? has a palette of probably like my three-year-old. Really? Basically level of like the chicken nugget. And so really? we made you try some. I thought we talked about like as a team, words of affirmation, building one Sorry. another up. And so we're going to go there right it. now. Just you, guys, you have to go watch this. Listen. I think you gagged on just a chocolate. Yeah, okay. I, I, I need to clear some things Go. up by that, by the way. Like, Go watch this video. Like, you know me. I'm, that's not faking. Like, we're not no. faking it there, all right? People have asked, hey, is this really you? Yes, it really is. Now, I don't hate Chipotle, people. I don't Shocking. hate Chipotle. It's fine. No. I just don't like what was in the burrito. Anyways, Hannah, the joke's Stop. not on me today. Not on you. The joke is not on me today. Hannah, I'm pumped about this I'm one. I'm pumped. Yeah. Get your Topics. Let's go. Hey, welcome to Hot Topics. I'm your host. My name's Hannah. These are some of your student pastors, Jarvis, Wagwan, and Tara, my girls. And today, for Hot Topics, we are going to be trying some of the hottest wings in existence from the one and only Buffalo Wild yeah. Wings. Yeah! BWW in the house. Here's the, here's the deal. I want to know, do you guys like hot things? Uh, I like hot food. Have you tried these before? Never tried these, but it's just another day eating lemon pepper wings from Fire Wings. I'm not phased. You got to go, to, go somewhere here. You got to go somewhere here okay. to eat them. Oh. I'm going to that place. Yeah. For the lemon pepper ones? For these boys. Oh, these okay. are lemon pepper. I was pepper. like, whoa. These are lemon pepper. Tell us more here. Okay, so you're mentally <laughs> I'm here. Tara, how do you feel about hot food? I love hot foods, but not really. Did you read the label on this? Oh, you guys. You got, okay. There is a disclaimer label. <laughs> Please read this, Tara. Warning, blazing sauce. May irritate eyes or skin, Charvis. Is it? Is that Wash it? in large amounts of water. Large? Do we? Guys, do we have large amounts water. of water? I'm gonna water. jump here? in the fountain outside so, and just drink the fountain when I'm done. Here's the deal. There are there are six wings in each box. This is a competition. I want to. You have a stick right here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know who can eat through the most amount of wings round by round eating the whole wing, and it's not just called just Hot Topics because of the food, but because of the topic. So I will ask a question. Your job will be to debate and answer it while you eat. This is my favorite thing ever. Let's go! Are you ready? Are you ready? It's gonna pepper. be great. Are you, okay, I'll hold it up. Let's show everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lemon show pepper them. Wing. Show it's them. It's gonna be great. It's nothing. All so right. It's like chicken fingers. Me. Here we go! Round one! Wing up. Gotta get a drum first. <laughs> first question. <laughs> you good? Ready? Roller coasters are one of the greatest thrills of life. Take a breath. Go! Tara, what do you think? I hate roller coasters. What? They're the worst. I like my life. And I don't want to end it early by dying on a roller coaster. Okay. Also, I got this. Charlie, how are we doing? <laughs> how do you feel about roller coasters? I love roller coasters. I love adrenaline. I've been skydiving before. So roller coasters really are nothing. Just like these wings are nothing. How are you feeling? <laughs> you doing okay, Terry? Are, are you sweating yet? No. You guys, what they don't know, they are so nervous right now. We're doing great. Are you, 
Okay, so you think roller coaster, you guys are doing good. Mm -hmm. What do you think about I'm that? You think, no, keep eating, there's still stuff in there. What is this? Eat all the, haven't you guys, eat it all. Anything else about roller coasters? Um, why are they not? Disneyland is fine, except that one that goes upside down at Adventureland. That's a no go. Disney is trash, Six Flags is better. I won't even go there, what's the point? Because it's, Six Flags has better roller coasters. So what is happening? Boss, let's go. We're good. Move okay, on. good. Wing Move down. On. They There's both nothing. passed. Here we go. Round two. Wing up. The question is, <laughs> which is better? Sweet tea? Unsweet tea? Oh, I wish I had some no. sweet tea. Bye. Well, unsweet tea is trash. <laughs> it's dirt water. Don't drink it. I'm pretty sure Jesus would drink unsweet tea. It tastes like dirt. Like it comes from the ground, just like he made us out of dust. Like it's me. <laughs> no Bible reference? Yeah. Gotta keep it Christ like. How are we doing? Sweet tea is amazing. If you're from the south or the north or the west or the east. <laughs> Not true. Nobody in the northeast drinks that crap. You're shaking. They should. No, I'm good. How are they you? Should. I'm doing so good. Buffalo Wild Wings, that's great sweet tea. That was Chick fil A. That was McDonald's. Are your lips burning yet? No, we're good with Ethan. We're using it every wings. It's really good. Check it. Eat more. Check it. You're clear. Woo! Oh! Okay. I'm good too. Oh. Okay. Um. Oh, just a little bit more. How are you? How are you? How is your mouth? We're good. Hey, Jarvis let's just, is can we shaking just can we right just keep now. Going? Okay. We're good. Okay. Uh, round what? Two. No, we're good. We're great. Round, round three. three. Here's the question. Which is better? Wing up. Hold tight. Uh, Jarvis. Are you okay? Right, do you really need to good. take a break? I'm getting no a little breath. lightheaded. Can we just keep going? We're good. We're Round good. three. Which is better? Football, aka soccer, or football America? On your mark, get set, wing. Dallas Cowboys is all that matter. <laughs> no, we ain't talking about that. We're talking about the sport. Soccer? Way to go. You sit down two hours exactly, you're done. Football, it's like 18 hours. No one even knows any football, excuse me, soccer teams, when they come on, how you score, it's boring. You don't know how to score in soccer? Are you serious? <laughs> Charles, are you okay? Yeah, great, I love it. Legit might pass out any minute. It's getting Legit. a little fuzzy. Who's your favorite soccer team? Oh, Liverpool. Trash! Hands down. <laughs> God's team. You know what their slogan is? You'll never walk alone. Just like you students, because me and Charvis, we're gonna walk through you. We don't walk with you. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys slogan is, <laughs> <laughs> He's joking! Yeah. He's joking! Can he do it? Can he do it right now? It's really now? good. I love it. It's, it's positive. It's okay, okay. Tara, Tara, Tara. Keep it going. I'm a little, that's a little tendon. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay. <laughs> what about the end? He's like leaving all the sauce on the. Okay. Here we go. You both pass round Dude, three. you're legit crying. <laughs> Look at the camera right now. That's no, just one. It's just, um, uh, I really weak I really weak tear ducts and it's nothing. Are we, are, we, are we good? Like, okay, here we, we go. we hit that time limit yet? Round four. Round four. The topic is. Bro, do you want to tap out? No, it's, no, it's such Let's a. Let's go, girls. We got this. Ah! <laughs> Boy, we're going to text. You need some other break. You're still chewing. I cannot proceed to round four. Bro, hurry up. I'm ready. Unless you finish. I almost choked is why the tears are coming down. Oh, I'm gonna pass my out. Life I'm gonna pass out. Eyes. They're going to have to drag me. I almost They're died. Are you ready for round four? Yes! I almost died. All right, here we go. Round four. No one cares about that. Wing up. Chirping my life. No, 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 no. It was some, um, Could I'm these sure. wings be any bigger? A piece of wing went to my lungs. Can you just, you know what I like? Can you just let us go? <laughs> it's ice cream. Ha! Mm. It's nothing. Why are you so good right now? Okay, here you we go. You know what? Jesus was in the uh, the wilderness for how many days? The Round desert? four. Got this. Topic is Raiders versus Cowboys. Which is better? Go! Five rings. Let's just start there. All right. You want to start here? If Jesus was here, he'd be a Raider fan. You know why? Who sins more than Raider fans? Jesus hung out with the sinners. I'm being Christ-like. I love that. Uh... You can't even think. He's crying. Let's do this. Uh, they just have to move cities because nobody wanted them in Oakland. <laughs> no one we wanted went to Vegas because yeah. who sends more than people in Vegas? We're just trying to be Christ-like. What did cool. I tell you? Cool. I'm going to go evangelize in Vegas. Here's the Five deal. more rings. Here's the deal, guys. This has been a great segment. Oh, oh, great the God! But the problem is, Tarvis is currently crying. <laughs> yes! I do! He's not! So we have a winner! Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Hot. 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 H
die. You're crying, bro. I almost died. You are messing. Bro. Hannah is doing something terrible. Now. You're crying, bro. Come on, Hannah. Don't walk it off. Go get some water. Good luck. Oh, my. He spit it out. He, spit he, it out. Spit he can't out. handle it. He's drinking a Baja Blast right now. Dang. Jeez, Hannah. This was amazing. Tara is eating a lemon. Hannah's a champ. She's a champ. Tara. Tara. No, lemon is right up, now. everybody. He's struggling over there. He's drinking a Baja Blast. I have not seen Charvis <laughs> cry while eating in my lifetime. Let's yet, go, so. bro. Holy cow. Pretty good. All right, Hannah. Yes. Well, we love to have fun around That's here, so but great. we love to make an impact as well. Yes. We got an announcement for y'all. Here's the deal. Bayside, compassion is everything. We want to be compassionate towards some kids who have been having a hard time. Most of you probably know and have experienced that COVID has been uh, hard. And a lot of kids need school supplies right now. And so we're going to encourage, we want to know which house man can give, 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 Colton, tell them what they need to do. That's right, guys. I'm laughing at these guys over here. That's the best part. But we, uh, here's what you can do. You can donate items. Milk. What do you got? She got a we milk. We got everything. Well, you Let's can go. donate items. You can donate things like pencils, pins, three ring binders, yeah. backpacks, things of that nature. So here's what we need you to do. Go yep. on our Instagram. You'll be able to see a post that basically says, here's what to give. Yeah. Here's when to give it. Here's how to give it. Drop it off of our office. So we want to see which groups come through yes. donating and loving on people of our community. And you've got a kids. week. By next week. week. Yeah, we want to make sure the kids have it before school starts. So get those in, Hannah. Yes. And right now, hey, guys, we're so pumped. We, every week, will be opening up the Word of God because we believe that this is the best thing that we could do. And so right now, we're pumped about this new series. It is called Encounter, Studying the Life of Peter. So open up your Bibles. If you don't have one, pull out your phone. There's a Bible app that you can get. And it's free. And it's free. If you don't have it. Get your notes ready, whatever you got to do to engage because this is going to be straight fire. So let's go. Let's go. What's up? Just like Hannah said, open up your Bibles, get ready, dive in, because we're going to get after it the next couple weeks. We're excited that we're hopping into the series, looking at the life of Peter. And here's the question I want to open up with as we open up this entire series called Encounter. And the question is this, are you open to encountering God? Are you open to encountering God? Because I think naturally a lot of us sitting around the living room right now, a lot of us would say this, yeah, of course. Of course I'm open to encountering God. But here's, even though we all say these things, there's a truth to it as well. Because here's what I think. I think a lot of us are willing and we like the idea of encountering God, but we don't like the reality of what's being asked of us. Let me say that again. I think a lot of us like the idea of encountering God, but we don't like the reality of what's being asked of us. What do I mean by that? Because here's the definition of encounter, right? Normally we think of the word encounter as a word that's just like you casually meet someone, you encounter them at the mall, you encounter them at church, whatever it may be. But the definition of encounter is this, an unexpected experience. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate unexpected things in my life. I can't stand it. I cannot stand unexpected things in my life. When I come in contact with someone, like I know the, I want to know the clothes that I'm going to get to wear, the time that I have to be there, the people that are going to be around, the food that I'm going to eat, like anything outside of that, guess what? I do not like it. And what that means for me is this, that I don't like encounters then. I don't like encounters. Why? Because it's an unexpected experience in my life. And here's why I say that. Because I think a lot of us, again, like the idea, but maybe not the reality. What do I mean by that? I like the idea. And before I became a father, my daughter's coming up on a year on October 17th. We're excited about it. I like, I like the idea of becoming a father. But guess what? 
the reality of becoming a father is a whole different ball game, y'all. Let me tell you something, right? I had some expectations in my mind of what it was look like to be a father. Yeah, I know I'm going to change a poopy diaper. That's okay. I'll, I still like the idea of being a father. But you know what the reality is? That when I wake my daughter up and she's on the cha changing table and poop is all the way down her back and it's all over the bed and now it's all over my head, hand. Guess what? I don't like that at all. I know you wouldn't either, right? I don't like, I like the idea of being a father. I don't like the reality of my daughter puking on me every five minutes and me changing my clothes. I like the idea, I don't like the reality sometimes. I like the idea of, of I, I knew becoming a father that I was gonna lose some sleep. Like it's okay, like I'm a, I'm a dad, right? We're gonna lose some sleep, go to bed a little later, wake up a little earlier. I didn't know that I was never going to get to sleep for the rest of my life ever again, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I like the idea, but the reality is a whole different game. And here's the reason why I tell you guys that right now, is because if we're being real and being honest, I think a lot of us like the idea of following Jesus, but we don't necessarily like the reality of what Jesus is asking us to say and do. I think a lot of us like the idea of following Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, what you stand for, what you're about, the things that you say, the things that you do, I like that, I support that. But all of a sudden, the reality that Jesus is talking to me, guess what? We don't necessarily like that. Why, because if you open up the Bible, and I asked you to go to Luke chapter five, so just listen with me for a second. In Luke chapter nine, there's a, a portion of scripture that, that is titled, The Cost of Following Jesus. And as Jesus is walking, it goes something like this. It says this, as Jesus was walking, he says, hey, you, follow me. Or this person looks at Jesus and says, hey, man, I want to follow you. Jesus, I like the idea of you. I want to follow you. And you know what Jesus' response was? He says this, Luke 9, verse 58. Jesus replied, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. What's Jesus saying there? He's saying this, guess what? You want to follow me? You're not going to be liked by everyone. You want to follow me? Guess what? You're not going to be loved and welcomed by everyone. We like the idea of following Jesus, but do we like the reality of, guess what? I may not be, be liked by everyone. Why? Because I'm following Jesus. What else does he say? He goes on to say this. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me first go bury my father. You know what this person is saying? God, I want to follow you. But first, let me go do this. I got something. I got plans I got to do. I got somewhere I got to go first. We like the idea, but the reality, Jesus is saying, I want you to drop everything that you have in your life right now to do what? Follow me. And he goes on to say this. Jesus said to another man, I will, uh, another man said to Jesus, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. As Jesus said, follow me. What's that person saying? Is that person saying, man, I got something to, I got to do. Like, Jesus, I, I, I want to follow you, but first let me go do this because I have a plan and I have a preference and I have something that I need to do. But I, I still like it. But guys, do we like the reality that Jesus, following Jesus is not easy. Following Jesus is a very, very hard thing to do. Following Jesus means, man, you may not be liked by everyone. Following Jesus means, man, Everyone might look at me a little differently than they do everybody else. Are you okay with that? Are you open to that? Because here's the question, man, I want to ask you is, man, what's the one thing? What's the one thing that you love more than anything else in this world? What's the one thing? Is it sports? Is it social media, your status? Is it popularity? Is it video games? Is it the relationships around you? Because here's, what I, here's why I bring that up. Because following Jesus means that someday Jesus might ask you to give up the thing that you love more than anything else. We like the idea of following Jesus, but the reality is following Jesus might mean we have to push everything aside to follow him and give everything up just to follow him. Following Jesus is not easy, but hear me when I say this, it's not empty either. Following Jesus isn't easy, but it's not empty either. What do I mean by that? I mean this, students. That if you follow Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, that you will find true contentment in your life. I truly believe this. You can search after all the money on planet Earth. You can have the nicest car on the block. You can have the biggest house. 
You could have the nicest clothes and the nicest shoes. You could be the most popular person in your school. But at the end of the day, you will not be satisfied. I know that for a fact. You will not be satisfied. That's why Jesus says in the Bible, he says this, th uh, drink for me and you will thirst no more. He says, you drink for me, you will thirst no more. What does that mean? When you pursue Jesus Christ, guess what? You will find the utmost satisfaction and contentment in your life when you pursue him. Here's what I'm saying, is that preference has no power in Christianity. Because here's, here's what I'm willing to bet. Preference has no power. Here's what I'm willing to bet. That a lot of you in the season, when COVID hit, and church, the physical building of church, church didn't shut down, but the building may have closed, the doors, is that a lot of your relationships with Jesus, I'm willing to bet that they became dull. I'm willing to bet that a lot of your relationships with Jesus it became stagnant. A lot of your relationships with Jesus became, let's say it, and let's be real, it became non-existent. Why? Because I think a lot of us, if we're to be honest, and it's okay, that's what this is all about, we want to be honest, is if we're to be real, we'd say that a lot of my Christianity is based around me. And maybe I'm holding on to certain things in my life, maybe I'm holding on to certain things too tightly, and because I'm holding on to these things too tightly because of what I prefer and what I want, that I never, real see, I never really see miracles in my life. I never experience power. I never really experience good things happen to my friends around me. I don't see my friends being transformed. Why? Because that faith that you walk with, why? It's built around your preference. And I'm here to say this, that preference has no power in Christianity. You cannot walk and follow Jesus if you have things and saying, Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. I'm listening to you. I like you, Jesus. But then all of a sudden when he says, come follow me, I want you to give everything up. Ah, Jesus, I like video games too much. When Jesus said, come follow me, give it up. Give up that sport that you love. And all of a sudden when Jesus said, ah, it's not the right time. Guess what? There will never be power in your life if you live with that sort of mindset and mentality. It will never be that way. And I truly believe this, that if you live with your Christianity and your faith following Jesus and the guidelines of you know the expectations, because here we're in a series, Encounter, an unexpected experience. But if you live your life trying to box Jesus in and you say, Jesus, I want to do things in the way that I look. I want things to know how I feel. I want the conversations that I know in advance that are going to happen. I want to see it on a plan. Guess what? Your relationship with Jesus is probably going to look like how it's been in this season. Probably something that's not really exciting. Probably something that's not really vibrant and doesn't feel alive. Why? Because you've tried to put Jesus in the expectation box. When we're looking at the life of Peter, it's a powerful story. We're going to look at the different encounters that he had with Jesus and how he handled them. In Luke chapter 5 what we told you to open up your Bible to, Jesus is teaching. Let's see, and once he gets done, he looks over at Simon Peter, who's been fishing all day, and he tells Simon Peter, he says, hey, I want you to cast your net on the other side of the boat. And here's what's crazy. This is one of the first interactions that Peter has with Jesus. He says these words. When he, when he finished speaking, put your, put your net in the deep water and cast down the nets. Simon Peter answered them this way. He said this, Master, we've worked all night and we haven't caught anything. For Peter right there, he had a decision to make. When he encountered Jesus Christ, he had a decision to make. Am I going to live by my preference or am I I'm going to let and open the door for power to be at hand? Because if it was up to Peter, you know what he would have done? He said, man, I've been fishing literally all night. You, wanna, you know what I want to do? I want to take my boat. I want to go home. I want to kick my feet up, drink a Dr. Pepper, and watch LeBron James win his fourth NBA title. That's probably what Peter wanted to do, right? But you know what Peter decided to do? Is put his preference to the side. And here's what he does. He says this. We've been fishing all night and haven't caught anything. Here's what Peter says. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Because you say so, Jesus, I will let down the nets. Peter's saying, my preference, guess what? I have an agenda. I know what I want to do, but I'm pushing it to the side. Because it's not about me. It's not about me. 
And you know what the Bible says right there? It says that fish began to jump in the boat, hop in the nets, begin to break the nets. Why? Because Peter put his trust and his faith in Jesus Christ. And Peter saw a miracle at hand. He saw power happen through his life. Why? Because he put his preference to the side. Students, what am I trying to say? Here's the big idea. I want you to get this. When preference dies, power lives. When preference dies, power lives. Now, Colton, what are you saying? You're saying that if Peter didn't put his preference to the side, that the fish would, Jesus couldn't let the fish jump in the boat and make a miracle? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is this, that preference, right, when you talk about it, it doesn't limit the power of what God can do. Preference doesn't limit the, what God can do. God can do anything in your life, at your school, in your community. He can do anything that he wants. But you know what preference does? Preference limits the power at which you allow God to work through you. You hear what I'm saying? God can do anything by his power, but if it's up to you and your preferences and holding on to things tightly, guess what? You are limiting what you allow God to do in and through your life. Here's the question I have for you students. What preferences do you have in your life that need to die? That's a real question. That's a tough question to answer right now. What preferences are in your life that you're holding on to so tightly that if God said, follow me, you said, ooh, Jesus, I love you, I like the idea of you, but the reality of giving this up, I don't know if I'm all in for that. I don't know if I'm all in for that. What preferences are inside of you? Maybe, maybe it's social status. Maybe it's what people think of you. Seriously, maybe it's a sport that you play. Maybe it's relationships that you have, people you hang around with. Maybe it's your identity. Students, here's, here, here's what I want you to do. Imagine with me. I don't know if you know this, but there's 500 of you gathering in houses right now. Imagine with me, 500 students. Ah, that's kind of crazy. Let's imagine 300 you. Still kind of crazy. 200, 100. Imagine 50. No. Imagine if you, you sitting right there, I'm talking to you. Imagine you, you said, man, I'm going to look at myself. And I've had a lot of preferences in my life and I've done a lot of things and I'm holding on to things, but I'm saying enough with that. And God, it's not about me anymore. It's not about me. I'm all in. I'm all in for you, Jesus. It's not about me. What if you decided this, to pray this every day? God, less of me and more of you. What if you decided that? God, what if you decided it's less about my worries and more about my worship? What if you decided, man, it's less about my feelings and more about my faith? What if you decided, man, it's, it's less about what I think and more about what you say of me? What if you decided, man, it's less about my desires and more about the dreams that you have for me? What if you decided, God, it's not about my preference, but it's the power at which you can work in me? What if you decided that? What if that became your prayer? How would things look different? How would your life be transformed? How would our world look different? Our communities, our sports teams, what would your families look like if you got down on your knees every single day and you prayed that prayer and you said, God, it's not about me. My preferences, man, I throw them aside. I'm all in because I want to see you do a miracle. I want to see you do powers in and through my life. And I'll start off this conversation by saying this, guys, I'm not better than any of you. I'm not better than any of you. I'm not perfect. I'm a selfish human being. I have my preferences. I like nice things in this world. But if I'm not willing to put those things at the altar of Jesus Christ, guess what? Me, like all of us, we're going to struggle to see real power in and through our lives every single day. Because why? We're holding on to things too, we care about too tightly. And at the end of the day, Jesus is just wanting open hands and open arms and say, I'm here, I'm present, I'm ready to get after it. The idea of following Jesus is great, but are you willing to make the reality of following Jesus even better, even more real, even more true? When we put preference aside, I truly believe this, students, that, man, the, your lives will look dramatically different. The power that happens in and through your life will look tenfold. Everything will begin to shift if you fall on your knees and say, God, less of me and more of you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for each and every student. I thank you for the students that are considering this in their heart right now, that believe it, that God say, man, it has been about me. It's been about my preference. It's been about 
my agenda too much. And it's not about me. It's not about my desires, my feelings, my thoughts. God, this is all about you. Following Je you, Jesus, is hard. It's not easy. It's messy. It's not perfect. But God, I thank you for the students that are willing to say, God, I'm willing to put everything I have at the altar for you. God, we thank you. In your precious and holy name we pray. All God's people said amen and amen. Hey, one more thing. We have these two goons over here to end us out right here. Hey, man, we're chilling. We're I'm chilling. just, just going to finish. Just don't have any lips anymore. <laughs> the boys are on fire. Just still a little crying over hey, here. Hey, family, uh, what an amazing message from Tuck. Um, this year, uh, we're going to spend time making memories that point you back to Jesus. So every single week, we'll come up with something cool um, inside of a cool little box to make memories to point you and your group back to Jesus. What's the final segment of the night? Ooh, okay, so when this is over, on your doorstep, we're doing what's in the box. What's, what's in the, the box? box? What's in the box? You don't know what's in the box. Every week it's gonna be different, but I'm pretty excited about this week, what's in your box. And I can't wait to see you post stories of what's in your box. So, y'all have a good time. We can't wait to see what's in your box. What's, what's in, in the, the box? box?